All right, welcome back to Math TV with Professor V. This is video lecture number 11 on solving applications system of three equations for intermediate algebra. So as you should expect, now that we can solve a system of three equations with three variables, we're gonna work on solving applications or word problems that lead to systems of three equations in three variables. So I've got four examples, and honestly, the trickiest part of these is setting them up, so that's just what I'm gonna do here. And then in the description, I'll list what the solutions are for each of them, okay? But if you can handle writing down the system of equations and you understood the previous video, you're gonna be good to go. First example, the sum of three numbers is 105. The third is 11 less than 10 times the second and twice the first is seven more than three times the second. Find the numbers. So keep in mind, when you have three unknowns, you need three equations in order to find a unique solution. So let's see if we can squeeze three equations out of the information that was given to us. And we also have to introduce some notation. So what are we gonna represent our unknown quantities with? What variables? And it just already right off the bat tells us that we're trying to find three numbers, right? Find the numbers. So I like just keeping things really plain and simple, x, y, z. So let's just let x equal the first number. y can be the second number. And z is the third number. Now, can you write three separate equations based on what was given to us in the problem? Right off the bat, look at this first sentence. The sum of three numbers is 105. So that means the sum, or x plus y plus z, is, remember when you see is in mathematics, you translate it into an equal sign, 105. Okay, bam, equation one is done. The third, the third number, which one was the third number? Z is, so that means equals 11 less than 10 times the second. This is where you need to be careful. When you say 11 less than, that subtraction comes after this term here, 10 times the second, 10 times Y and then minus 11. If I were to say I have 11 less donuts than my neighbor, and my neighbor has 13, how would you figure out how many donuts I have? You would do 13 minus 11, not 11 minus 13. Okay, so when you see that phrase less than, the subtraction comes after. Yes, I want a donut right now. It's very early in the morning here. Okay, and then next sentence, twice the first, so that would be two times x, right? Twice the first is equals seven more than, so when you're doing addition, you don't have to stress, right, about the order, addition's commutative, how beautiful, seven plus three times the second, seven plus three y. Here are our three equations. Does it matter that only one of them had all three variables? No, remember in the previous lesson we went over when you solve systems of three equations, three unknowns, if one of the variables is missing in a couple of the equations, it's no problem. What it usually means is it's gonna be easier to solve the system. So to set ourselves up for success, let's put everything in standard form. So equation one is already in standard form. You want all the variables on the left, constants on the right, and put them in order, so x first. Um, I'm gonna have negative 10y plus z equals negative 11. And then third equation is going to be 2x minus 3y, leave a space, equals 7. I'm going to stop here because you can just watch the previous video if you want to see how to solve systems of three equations, three unknowns. Really now is a good time for you to practice and make sure you can do it on your own, okay? So I'll list in the description the solutions as well, but I'll put it here in case you want to pause the video and then check. All right, so you should get x is 17, y is 9, and z is 79. Um, I'm not gonna answer in a complete sentence or whatever. It just said find the numbers, so there they are. We found them. Okay, let's look at another example. 
Sven, Tina, and Lori can process 740 telephone orders in one day. Sven and Tina together can process 470 orders, while Tina and Lori together can process 520 orders per day. How many orders can each person process alone? All right, very similar setup. We have these three people, Sven, Tina, and Lori, and we wanna know how many orders they can each process at this job that they're doing. So I'm gonna still use X, Y, and Z, okay guys? I really don't recommend being cute and saying S, T, L, weird stuff like that. Okay, so let's let X equal the number of orders for Sven that he can process. Y can be the number of orders for Tina. And Z can be the number for Lori. And again, we've got three unknowns, so we need three equations. Look right here. They can process 740 telephone orders in one day. That's all three of them. Think back, we did something super similar. All three of them together equal 740. So our first equation is gonna have x plus y plus z equals 740. Okay, not so bad. Sven and Tina together can process 470 orders. So just x and y together is equal to 470. That's another equation, just x and y is equal to 470. Woo! I just need one more equation. Tina and Lori together can process 520 orders per day. Tina and Lori, that would be Y plus Z together, that's 520. There's our three equations. Look how fantastic. I already wrote them in standard form and you're ready to go. So you can solve this system. It should be really straightforward because we don't even have any coefficients on the variables that aren't one. Um, and then if you work this out, the answer is Sven can process 220 orders per day. Tina can process 250 orders. And then Lori, can process 270 orders. Obviously she's carrying the team. I don't know what Sven's doing, probably texting on the side, not focused. No, I'm just messing. Okay, good. Let's look at two more. It's really all in the setup, so that's why, that's what I'm focusing on here. Okay, a breakfast consisting of two pancakes and one serving of strawberries contains 4.5 grams of fiber. Whereas a breakfast of two pancakes and a serving of Cheerios contains four grams of fiber. When I know they tell you read the word problem slowly in most books, but I like to just read it fast to get a feel for what's going on and then I'll reread it slowly. Okay, so we're going fast. When a meal consists of one pancake, one serving of Cheerios, and one serving of strawberries, it contains seven grams of fiber. How much fiber is in each of these? Foods. Okay, so that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in how much fiber, and it looks like we're measuring our fiber in grams every single time. Did you see that? Is in each of these foods. What foods did they talk about? We are talking about pancakes, strawberries, and Cheerios. These are the three foods we're talking about, and we want to know how much fiber, how many grams of fiber are in each of these three foods. Okay, so yeah, don't get so hung up on the details when you're reading word problems that you get overwhelmed and you go into shutdown mode. Read them quickly, okay? And then you can go back and reread them. The words aren't like an invisible ink, so just go quick. Okay, X, Y, and Z. Let's let X, I usually match the variables for the um, to each quantity in the order that they appear in the word problem. So for example, we're talking about pancakes first, so I'm gonna let X be the number of grams of fiber in one pancake. Pancake. And then Y is going to be the number of grams of fiber in one serving of strawberries. I don't know how much a serving of strawberries is. Half a cup? 
doesn't matter. Okay, and then Z is going to be the number of grams of fiber in one serving of Cheerios. Okay, so we need our three equations. Let's hop to it. A breakfast with two pancakes, so that would be two X's, and one serving of strawberry, that would be one Y, contains or is equal to 4.5 grams of fiber. Okay. So 2x plus a y gives us 4.5 grams of fiber. All right, moving on. Two pancakes and a serving of Cheerios contains 4 grams of fiber. Two pancakes, 2x, plus Cheerios, that means z, let me scoot this over, plus z is 4. When a meal consists of one of everything, one pancake, one serving of Cheerios, one serving of strawberries, so that would be X plus Y plus Z, then it has seven grams of fiber. So X plus Y plus Z equals seven. How much fiber is in each of these foods? Okay, there you go. Pancakes. The kind that they're making at this establishment for breakfast have a half a gram of fiber per pancake and then a serving of strawberries 3.5 grams of fiber and Cheerios one serving three grams of fiber okay very good you work that system out on your own you can do it Last example, you know what's so funny, I used to do this exercise for years when I was teaching algebra at a different school, and there were no Chick-fil-A's near us, and now they're rampant. I don't know, if, I still have never been, can you believe it? I always choose something else when it's fast food time, never Chick-fil-A. Okay, Chick-fil-A recently sold 14 ounce lemonades. For one forty-nine each, twenty ounce lemonades for one sixty-nine each, and thirty-two ounce lemonades for two oh five each. During a lunchtime rush, Chris, I'm assuming Chris is a Chick-fil-A worker, sold forty lemonades for a total of sixty-seven forty, and they did this using six point two five gallons of lemonade. How many drinks of each size were sold? And they're telling you as a hint, one gallon is one hundred and twenty-eight ounces. Of course it is. Okay. So what are they asking us just so we get a feel for like what the quantities are? What should I let my variables represent? They want to know how many drinks of each size were sold. And we've got 14 ounce lemonades, 20 ounce lemonades, and 32 ounce lemonades. So I'm just going to call them small, medium, and large. Okay. So we'll just let X equal the number of small lemonades. Y can be the number of medium lemonades, and Z can be the number of larges, okay? All right, good. We'll worry about the ounces gallon situation in just a bit. But first, let's see if we can come up with three equations, okay? Think back when we were solving two equations with two unknowns. I told you usually one equation would deal with quantity and then the other one would deal with value. And so in this scenario, we actually have one quantity equation and we'll have two value equations. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Can you find the info that tells us about the quantity or how many lemonades we're talking about altogether? Yes, during this lunchtime rush, there were 40 lemonades sold altogether. So that tells me equation one x plus y plus z is equal to 40. Altogether, there were 40 lemonades. Now, for value, we have two different kinds of value that we're talking about. We have total monetary value, and then we're also going to talk about the amount of, or fluid ounces, basically, of lemonade. Okay, that's sort of a quantity, but not really now, because each of them has a certain amount of ounces assigned to them. Okay, so for the second equation, if we're looking at the money, right, or the, what each of the sizes 
generates monetarily. These smalls go for 149 each. So each small, each X sells for 149. Each medium, each Y, goes for 169. And each Z, each large, goes for 205. And this brought in 6740. Okay. And then I want to now look at how many ounces of lemonade each size contains. So each small is 14 ounces, so 14X. Each medium is 20 ounces, so 20Y. And the larges are 32, 32Z. And they told me altogether there were 6.25 gallons of lemonade. So how many ounces is that? Because notice this equation on the left-hand side, 14, 20, 32, those are all ounces. So I'm going to take 6.25 gallons, multiply by 128, because there's 128 ounces in a gallon, and that's 800 ounces. So this is going to equal 800. Your units have to match up, okay? So that's it. Um, when you sit there to actually solve, it might be a nice idea um, to multiply this through by 100 so you don't have any decimal places. And then go from there. This is going to be definitely the trickiest of all of the equations, okay? But if you venture for the challenge, here's what you should get. The number of smalls, there were 10 smalls sold. Medium, 25 and large only five. All right, so that concludes the lesson. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and this basically wraps up this unit. So we're gonna move into a new unit in the future lectures for Intermediate Algebra, stay tuned.